video and what we're going to make in this one is some kind of obelisk or um, monolith that uh, could be in some kind of fantasy game and it won't take us too long and we're pretty much going to use most of the same techniques that we used in the previous video uh, with a few extras such as scaling and moving objects around. So you can save this by going file save and uh, make a save to that. I'm just going to use the same model and delete these three objects. So when I go to add, I'm going to add a mesh. I'm going to add a cube. I might just reset this, file new, reload startup file. Now what I didn't talk about last video was what these things were. This is your camera and this is your light source. For the most part, we can ignore them for now, so we will. This little red and white uh, dot with a crosshair in it, that's your 3D cursor. Whenever I add an object to my scene, it's going to get added into that position. So if you don't have a mesh there in your new scene, add a mesh and it's going to be a cube. So there we've got the cube. Now we're going to go straight into edit mode and I'm going to select this. Right mouse button selects objects in Blender. And I'm going to bring it down a little bit. So what I just did there was left click and grab that uh, panel there. I'm just going to bring up my mouse options, add-ons, um, screencast keys. They are enabled, but they're not enabled. There they are, start display. Okay, so I've just brought that down. I'm going to bring it down to about there. Then I'm going to select the whole thing with A. It says A times 3 down there. It's just because A will deselect everything and then A will select everything again. And I'm going to use S to scale this up a little bit. Not too big, just like that. So I've got kind of a platform. I might grab this top one again, just the top face, and scale it down. I'm going to have a platform there. The next thing I'm going to do is inset this. So you should remember how to use inset. I'm going to use I and inset this a little bit. And then I'm going to extrude this up just a wee bit, just about that much there. So from here, I'm going to use a technique on the left hand side called subdivide. I'm wondering if I can turn this grid off for now because I don't really need the grid. No, I might just select everything and move it up above the grid. So it's kind of sitting at the bottom there. If you think of the grid as the bottom of the world, uh, or like the ground, that's one way to think of the grid, but you don't really need to. There's no, there's no ground in this. Um, it's just a 3D space. So what I've got here is a little tiny platform at the bottom. And with this top face, I'm going to use a tool called subdivide. Um, actually, I won't use subdivide because I'll show you what subdivide does. But it's going to give me a lot of extra faces that I don't need. And so I might just undo that. Instead, what I'm going to do is use a ring cut. And a ring cut looks like this. So I push Control R to do a ring cut. And over here, it's called loop, cut, and slide. So I'm going to select this edge, and I'm going to move it just over here. So I'm going to click and move it to about there. Then on the other side, I'm going to do the same thing, about the same distance. I'll move so I'm looking above. I'll do the same thing going the other direction. So I kind of want to have some squares in the corner here, which we'll leave for now, but we're going to use those later on. And I'll go back to face mode because when you go into loop cut and slide or ring cut, it um, goes to a weird edge select or it goes to edge select. It's not weird. Now this one here is not going to be difficult. We're just going to extrude it and we're going to actually extrude it in different portions because we might make some changes to this later. So we're going to have five portions about this high. And then we're going to have another portion that goes a little bit higher, but I'm going to scale it in. So I'm going to hit S and scale it in kind of like that, maybe a little bit more like that there. Then the next part, and you can pause the video at any time as well. The next part we're going to extrude up probably about that far and scale it in a little bit. Extrude up, scale in a little bit more. We kind of want it to look like it's um, 
not quite curving. I'm not sure what the term would be, but we're going to get to about here. And then the last bit on top, I'm going to go like that, scale it in, and then up, and scale it into a point, very last point, extrude up, scale it in like that. Okay, so I've got a, I'm not sure what you call it, an obelisk, a monolith, something like that. With face mode, I'm now going to make a few more changes to this. I'm going to select these here. I'm going to repeat this on all four sides, but I'm just going to do it to one first. I'm going to inset it like that and then extrude it inwards just a little bit. That's probably too much. Now, I don't want to extrude it outwards if I make a mistake. Uh, and I've seen a lot of people do this. You try to extrude it outwards. And then what happens is you get those faces there, those hidden faces. Instead, if I take it in too far, to take it back out, I just grab the green handle and pull it back the other way. Okay, so I'll repeat this here. Inset a little bit and extrude inwards a little bit. Inset a little bit and extrude inwards a tiny bit. And last one over here. Inset a little bit, extrude inwards. Okay, so if I go back to here, you can kind of see what we're, what we're aiming for. Some kind of a statue, um, an ancient looking statue here. If we were gonna put textures on it, it might have some hieroglyphs or something in here and some stone textures down the bottom here. Um, there is one more thing we're going to add, and that is down here. I'm gonna select all four of these. I'm gonna extrude them upwards a little bit, like that. And then, this bit's gonna be a little bit tricky. What I'm gonna do is grab, how will I do this? Okay, so I'm gonna select these two vertices, that one and that one. And I'm gonna push Control V, and or Alt M is the shortcut, but Control V will bring this menu up. I'm gonna merge, and I'm gonna merge at uh, the last one that I selected, which was the bottom one, that one there. Okay, then I'm gonna do the same thing here. So select that one first, select that one at the bottom, Control V, merge at last. And then the same with this one here. Control V, merge at last. So what I get is a little triangle doovie happening there. That's not really what I want, so I'm just gonna undo that. Instead, I might just grab this and bring it down. Uh, I see the problem that I'm having. I'm just gonna leave it as a little stone thing for now, okay? Instead of, instead of trying to change things and make it extra difficult on myself here, I'm just gonna leave that um, like that and could maybe make some changes to it later. Now there are a few other changes I wanna make. I wanna make this look less perfect. So there are a few ways that I could do this. And one way I'm gonna demonstrate, so I'm gonna use the knife tool. K is the shortcut for knife tool, it's also over here. So I'm gonna use K. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut like a chunk out of this corner. But in 3D modeling, you have to be very precise how you do this because if you just try to move vertices around, so I could just grab this vertice here and move it like that. The problem is that now I've got one, two, three, four, a face with four sides, but it doesn't really know how to display it properly. Uh, if I was to export this model, it would either try to add an extra face in here or add one along here, and it would just go a bit crazy. So what I need to do is make a few changes to it first. I'm gonna do that using K. So K is gonna cut, and I'm gonna cut from here to here, and then from there to there, from there to there, and then there to there. When I'm done, I will, um, I think, hit enter. This one here is too far along, so I'll just move it along using that arrow. And then with this, I can move it to the right and in a little bit. Just like that, let's deselect it. And it's still made up of triangles. 
So triangles can be kind of at any angle, but these rectangles really do need to be flat. Um, this rectangle is still flat. What I mean by that is that this line, this line are parallel, and this line and this line are parallel. Uh, if they're not like that, you'll get some odd things happening. Um, well, they're not actually parallel, are they? But I think you get what I mean. They're kind of going in the same direction. And I might do the same over here. So I'll use K and I'll select from there to there, from there to there, spin around this way, there to there, enter to confirm, select that vertex, bring it in that way, push it back that way a little bit. So I go into edit mode, object mode, and I can see that it looks like it's a little bit defective now. It's uh, had stuff worn away at it over time. Um, it's looking pretty good. Materials wise, I could go and select the whole thing, material. It doesn't have a default material applied to it for some reason, which is odd. Uh, but I'll go new material and I'll call this stone and I'll make it gray. So gray is just the central color, which is white. And then I bring that hue down on the right hand side. And then I get that there. And I'll select these. And make a new material. And I'll call it light stone. Change the diffuse color to be a lighter gray like that there and then assign it to that okay so I've got that there this would actually probably be better if I change these diffuse colors to maybe more of a sandy brown and this one oops that's not the diffuse Don't want it to look green. It's looking too green there. There we go. So like that there. Okay, and then I've got a, a fairly decent low poly game asset. I could put some textures on here and uh, we'll, we won't be doing that. Textures are actually quite hard in Blender. Um, we can make our own kind of custom textures, but we don't want to make uh, or import textures because then we have to get to UV mapping. Um, at the moment, I'm looking at that with year 11. So starting those UV maps at year nine uh, is quite a difficult concept to wrap your head around. But you should have been able to complete the crate. You should have been able to complete this model. Uh, next video, we'll look at uh, creating a low poly tree and um, seeing what we can do with that. And then we'll build a small environment using these models that we've made.